Welcome back to the Wizard Shop. For those of you who are just now tuning in and never been to this channel before, uh, hit the subscribe button. We're getting really close to 100,000 subscribers. I'm really excited about that. And if you know a few friends who'd be interested in this content, let them know too. But anyways, uh, on a previous video, we talked about the 5.4 three-valve Ford and some of the issues and how it was the worst engine ever and going on and on about that. Today, we're going to talk about the stupidest design ever as far as an engine goes. Not necessarily the worst engine, but the des design is really stupid. <laughs> This is a 2002 Cadillac DeVille with the 4.6 North Star in it. This is my one of my kid's cars. Is, she named it Jarvis. This is Jarvis. He's pretty dirty right now. It's raining today. It's pretty nasty out. And, but we're going to talk about the, uh, the head gasket issues and the, the head bolt issues. Probably some of you, when you first seen the car, you instantly said, oh, head, head gaskets are blown on that car. No, they're not. Then it haven't been for years. It's because I fixed it properly with head studs from North Star Performance. Typically, the worst years on these is around 97 to 99, around in that range. I really wish that they were just over and over and over failing. And in 2000, they tried to lengthen the head bolts, try and take care of the issue. And it helped a little bit, but it really did, still didn't solve the problem. So it wasn't until 2005 that they finally got it fixed. After that year, they really don't have this problem anymore. They went to LS6 head bolts, and that took care of the problem. Really, really the problem on these is the threads were like really shallow, fine threads, and the diameter of the bolt was very small. A steel bolt into aluminum, when you try to put those kind of pressures with just little fine threads, um, you can see some of the pictures here that the, actually pulls the complete set of threads out of the block. When you go to try to remove it, you can see the the threads have just come out with the bolt. That's not very good and very conducive for holding a cylinder head down. The fix for that is in the, in the dealerships, they would use time certs. They would drill it out a little bit bigger and put, and as you, I'll show you some pictures here, of some time certs where they put these little threaded inserts in and then use the stock head bolts or steel threads at that point. I know a guy who's a, who worked in the years of these at the dealerships and he did a lot of these and he said that the GM fix, the threaded time certs, would probably get you by for three to five years, and then it would blow the head gasket again. He said it was pretty much guaranteed. When they would come in to have this job done, you're looking at four or five grand every time. That was the dealership charge. And if I was to do this today, you have to pull the whole motor and everything out. It really just makes it easier just to pull the whole power unit out and put it on some stands and work on it and you have to pull the heads off and if I were to do this job again it would probably be four or five grand and there lies the problem with these cars these are sell on Craigslist all day long for two or three grand for a nice one and you go to a customer and say okay I can fix this problem it's going to be four or five grand and they're going to be like I didn't even spend that much on the car there's no way I'm putting that into the car I'll never recoup my my losses so that's a guaranteed no fix every time. It gets declined, declined, the repairs are declined. And that's why these cars are so cheap on Craigslist. Because people are like, oh no, I'm not, I'm not buying one of those. I know the trouble with one of those. Let's open the hood on this and take a look around. And I also have the kit that I had originally used. I'll show you that, how that works, and, and uh, just give you a glance around underneath the hood. So here we have the hood open, and just like I made the comment, here a little bit ago it's not really the worst engine ever it just really has a stupid design in those years when they were blowing head gaskets left and right it's kind of an engineering flaw to, to think why would you put that kind of a fastener and you know and have these kind of issues but the proof proof in the pudding is that once you do head studs on these th this car has been running for four years zero problems with the engine none the coolant's even at the same level that it was four years ago it it just it just runs great. There's no issues with the engine. But as I stated a little bit ago, when you go to fix this problem, the engine has to come out the bottom. And the reason why, and I've heard of people that are able to do it, the engine in place like this, but it's just, there's no way I'm going to drill holes in my block bigger while it's sitting in, it, in here. I can't get a good straight angle on it. Or a, As you can see, even if you get the cams off and the cam covers, I mean, you can't, once you get head studs on here, you can't get the head on. The, the head, especially back here on this one, I mean, it, I've heard of guys rolling the motor forward and working on it, 
Maybe with time certs I could see that, but with head studs I don't, I don't see how. But uh, let me show you the actual tools that I use to do this job. This is the company I use, North Star Performance. There's Jake Wiebe is the, the founder. I, I got this kit from him. They had just really gotten going at that point and it's an excellent kit. Like I said, it's been going for four years, no trouble. You have to take the heads off and get to the, 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 the engine block surface. And as you can see here, this is the size of the original head bolts. And this is what it turns out to be when you drill them out. It's almost double, maybe even triple the diameter. And coarse threads, that's the key thing here. Coarse threads in aluminum, deep coarse threads. These little ones just pull, pull the threads out. But basically you have to take this little drilling drill brace so you take these, these original size bolt holes and you tighten it in you've got it located then you have a smooth hole here and this used a special drill bit that's got a stop on it so you don't go too deep and you drill the old threads out what you do is you take this flip it over put these back in and then this will guide your tap straightly into the hole all the way down and back out again and then you go and flip it around and do the other holes and it's kind of a long tedious process this type of job you probably better be a car wizard if you're going to do it because if you're if you don't have a whole lot of experience especially I've, did, I've done machining work I used to be a machinist years ago if you don't have a lot of experience with a drill or hole tolerances or things like that, if you don't get this right and you drill the holes crooked or you blow out the holes or you tear up the threads, you just ruined your block. You just ruined your engine. It's not for the faint of heart. This is a serious job for a serious person who's either into this or is a professional mechanic. So uh, this was the first one I've ever done. And it's probably the last one I'll ever do. Not because I don't want to do the job. It's really not hard. It's time consuming. But like I said here just a little bit ago, the cost is the issue. Who in the world's going to pay for that when the car is only worth $2,000? So that's what, what I run up against. So people say, have you done a lot of those since? No, I'd like to, but I don't blame the customer for not wanting to do it. Unless there's sentimental value or something special to the vehicle, there really is no reason to fix it. It's just not, it's almost not worth it. So that kind of gives you an idea of what was the common issue with these engines. And I'm not, I'm not really going to make the claim it's the worst engine ever because as we see here, once that issue is fixed, it's been trouble free. Absolutely no issues. So this is a really nice car. It rides really nice. And obviously it's not a Rolls Royce, but they're still fairly, fairly good car. They ride good. They actually get good fuel economy. So for me, it was worth fixing it. I got the car for really cheap and fixed it. And now my daughter's driving it. I didn't have to go buy a car. And I can trust that she can drive it. And she has been driving it for a long time without blowing head gaskets. It's not going to happen. Because as you've seen how big those threads were when you fix it, it would have to break the bolts or damage the head before it pulled that out. So, so anyways, thanks for tagging along with me today. I thought you guys would like to learn a little bit about the worst design ever. It's not the worst engine ever, but I think it's a pretty, pretty bad design flaw there. Uh, if, you, if you see below, we have t-shirts for sale. There's, there's coffee mugs. There's uh, hoodies. And there's also now stickers, decals, that you can put on your car or your toolbox at work or wherever it is that you, on your cubicle. Any tools in the previous videos you've seen that I use, check my Amazon affiliate page. All those are listed there for sale and maybe help you get some work done on your car. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll try to stay dry today in this crummy weather.